Hello everyone, this is Manas, your friend and tutor and guys, I'm back with another video on the previous year problems from simple stress and strain and uh, this is going to be part 2. So if you have not seen part 1, go ahead and watch that video as I had covered problems say starting from 1989 until you reach 2007 and today we are going to kick off with problems from uh, 2008 and onwards until you get to 2018. So the first problem is the a two mark problem and let's see what this has got. So this basically is a sort of combo problem. There is there are going to be two problems, 11th and 12th. And for that, we need to actually read this description. <clears throat> okay, so there is a cylindrical container. So it's, it's something like this. Okay, and what we've been given is, is a cut section. This is the cut section and the water is filled up to this level, say at a height of, till a height of two meters, you can say. Now, Let's, let's read this. This radius has been given as 1 meters. Okay, let me just circle all the given data. Wall thickness is 1 millimeter. So that's shown over here. Filled with water up to a depth of 2 meters. Okay, depth is 2 meters. Here it has been shown in the figure. Very clear. This is water by the way. And suspended along its upper rim. Okay, suspended. The density of the water is given as 1000 kg per meter cube. That's quite true. Even if it is not given and it's stated in the problem that it's water, you've got to, you've got to take it as 1000. That's by default. Acceleration due to gravity. I mean, this was not needed yet. They've given it 10 meters per second square. The self weight of the cylinder is negligible. Okay. The formula for hoop stress. This is something which is new for a thin walled cylinder can be used at all points along the height of the cylindrical container. Now guys. <coughs> This particular chapter is simple stress and strain and we are yet to learn about thin shells or thin cylindrical vessels. There we actually learn the concept of circumferential stress also known as hoop stress and there is also something which is known as longitudinal stress or axial stress. Okay. Now to, to know more about these two kinds of stress, watch this. So here it is. Take a careful look at this. This over here is a cylindrical vessel. This is having a diameter of let's say small d and uh, we've got this thickness this thickness let's say is represented by small t fine now this circumferential stress is set up just try to read this definition it is set up in the wall of the cylinder on the cross section along the axis so we are going to have a cross section which is going to be along the axis it's something like this so this is the cross section along the axis okay and somewhere in this blue strip the stresses are going to be set up because of the resisting forces right now let me have another figure let me have the portion in which let me have this projected portion okay so this is basically the portion on which the force due to fluid pressure is acting force due to fluid pressure is equal to p multiplied by this yellow colored area this is the projected area by the way this is going to be equal to d into l Done. That's it. This is D from this point over here to this point. That is D for sure. This length, length of the cylinder. Well, this guys, this is going to be L. In the same manner, the resisting forces will be set up across this blue colored strip. Okay. Across this cross section, you can say. So this is going to be the resisting forces, resisting force, resisting force. Now this resisting force is actually equal to sigma okay that is the stress induced let's say along the circumference for that sigma c multiply this area this area is how much if you watch carefully this thickness this is how much this is t and this entire length is l that is l into t and this area by the way is l into t and this area is also l into t so it is 2 lt therefore it's very simple sigma c multiplied by 2 lt is equal to P multiplied by D into L and that's very simple and L will cancel out and circumferential stress well or hoop stress is going to be equal to PD by 2T. It's that simple. In the same manner, let us try to work out the longitudinal stress or the axial stress. Well, that is going to be set up on a cross section perpendicular to the axis. Let me just show you. Okay. Well, there is actually a circular plate above and a circular plate below. Right. And on that plate, fluid pressure is actually acting. Okay. So I've not made that for clarity. So it's something like this on a cross section perpendicular to the axis. This is the axis. 
perpendicular to the axis there is this cross section this uh, this is where this blue colored strip you see circular strip is where the resisting forces are going to set up because of which there is going to be stress and that stress is the longitudinal stress along the axis you can say let us have another figure okay and fluid is basically acting on this region this yellow region and this is how much this is pi by 4 d square pi by 4 d square and force due to fluid pressure is acting in the downward direction and this is going to have a magnitude of pi by 4 d square multiplied by the pressure the resisting forces will be set up around this region okay and the resisting force let me just write it over here resisting force will be equal to what stress generated well this is longitudinal let's say sigma l or sigma a some people write it at sigma a multiplied by can we find the area of the strip this is fairly simple 2 pi r okay or just pi d let's say circumference and this thickness is how much pi d this is going to be t and let, let me just do the math and let me first yeah done so this is pretty easy resisting force is equal to the applied force applied force is due to fluid pressure and resisting force is because of the material of the thin shell okay so this is going to be very easy sigma l uh, multiplied by pi dt is equal to pi by 4 times of d square multiplied by p and done diameter gone and that's pd by 4t so longitudinal stress is equal to what p d by 4t remember sigma c is equal to p d by 2t and at the same time sigma l is equal to p d by 4t Okay, so after watching this video, I am very much sure that you must have understood what is uh, hoop stress, uh, rather what is longitudinal stress and what, what is uh, circumferential stress. Now, let's take this session forward and we're going to be using basically these two formulas and they are going to be very, very helpful. So, one is what do we need to calculate? Axial stress, that is longitudinal stress, sigma A. Well, the formula for this is P D over 40. And the second formula that uh, we had actually derived is sigma c circumferential stress. This is going to be p d by 2t. So the biggest confusion over here is to work out what is the pressure. Okay, on are the pressures different at uh, for the circumferential stress that is this sigma c and for the axial stress. Let me tell you what it is. So if you watch carefully, the axial stress is going to develop under this section in this section okay under this section due to this this is the longitudinal axis by the way if i can just make this this is the longitudinal axis and the axial stress developed will be parallel to this axis just try to listen try to observe so there is a circular plate over here and that plate would look something like this let me just draw it over here right something like this yeah precisely now let me use a different color say we have a blue color so this is where this is where the fluid pressure is acting or force due to the fluid is acting okay this is the force due to fluid and let me use a black color then and this is the stress this stress is across this entire cross section this is what you call sigma a okay and this actually worked out as pd over 2t so the total pressure of the fluid is acting over here at this point at all the points in fact you can say uh, across this area so the pressure at this point let's say let's have a cross section rather let's say we have this cross section let's call this as cd so here we'll take into account here we'll take into account for this axial stress we'll take into account pcd pressure along cd and as far as sigma c is concerned, it has been clearly stated that the formula for hoop stress for a thin walled cylinder can be used at all points along the height of the cylindrical container. And it has been clearly asked the axial and circumferential stress experienced by the cylinder wall at mid dip. That means somewhere here. Okay. A, B. For circumferential stress, you, you will actually calculate the pressure along this AB cross section and for axial stress, you will actually work out the pressure along this CD cross section, that's for sure. It's something like this, as you go deeper, as you go deeper, the value of pressure increases. 
okay it's something like this let me just show you and uh, if you just try to make a plot it's going to be something if i try to hold this pin properly yeah something like this the pressure is maximum at the depth okay so if you're inside a swimming pool and if you try to go deeper you'll realize and you'll rather sense that the pressure has increased if you're on the surface no problem okay the pressure increases and here the pressure is going to be maximum maximum pressure this is corresponding to pcd and this is corresponding to rather here this pressure is corresponding to p a b now the formula for pressure you know is rho g h and the value of rho well we know how much it is 1000 into g that is uh, well that is 10 and the value of h we also know this h how much deep this is 1 meter deep so if you just try to work it out this is going to work out as p a b this is 10 raised to 4 okay this is 10 raised to 4 the unit here and the unit is going to be newton per meter square rather let us write it as pascals well guys uh, i'll take my time to explain you all of this stuff this is very important so this is rather a combo combo problem the, the four marks are involved so the pressure can be worked out with this formula rho gh that's done pab and what about pcd again you have to use this so 1000 multiplied by again this is g is 10 obviously multiply by how much deep at this point it is at a depth of 2 meters so you just multiply it by 2 so this is going to work out as 2 into 10 raised to 4 pascals okay now you just need to punch in the values over here and on doing that you will get the answer it's it's that simple let me just show you let me put put, put in the values pcd is how much where is it 1000 this is 2 into 10 raised to 4 The diameter by the way is 2R and R is how much? R is 1 meters. Okay. I saw it somewhere written. Yeah. So this is going to be 2 meters. All of that divided by 4 times of T and T is 1 millimeters. 1 millimeter is nothing but 10 raised to minus 3 meters. So this final value will work out in Newton per meter square. Right. In the same manner, you can also do it for AB also. And AB the pressure is 10 raised to 4. So it's 10 raised to 4 multiplied by uh, multiplied by what okay that is d 2 upon 2t 2 times of t is 10 raised to minus 3 meters and that's it you just need to punch in the values let me go ahead and check this um, sigma a that is 2 into 10 raised to 4 into 2 yeah divided by 4 into 10 raised to minus 3 this is going to work out as 10 into 10 raised to 6 that is 10 mega pascals 10 into 10 raised to 6 should be the value that you will be getting in your calculator and then secondly this sigma c that you are going to get will also be well this is also going to work out as 10 into 10 raised to 6 mega pascals and you can see that very clearly 4 and 4 will cancel out this 2 and 2 will cancel out there is only a 10 raised to 7 and here also 10 raised to 4 10 raised to minus 3 will go upstairs 10 raised to 7 that is 10 mega pascals so the correct option is option a option a is correct okay the biggest mistake, this is a trick question by the way, the biggest mistake that students are are going to do in this particular problem that they'll they'll take the pressure, they, they, they'll take this pressure only, okay, 10 raised to 4 for calculating both sigma a and sigma c. For calculating sigma c, you need to take the pressure at mid depth, that is rho g h and for which h will be equal to 1. But for calculating longitudinal stress or the axial stress, you need to know what the pressure at the depth is right and the pressure over there is rho g into h where h is equal to how much how much deep it is two meters deep i think i have taken i have invested a lot of time for this problem now let us move forward the second part okay so so this is also fairly simple this is going to be very easy young's modulus and poisons ratio have been given okay let's let's use blue okay given Axial strain in the cylinder wall at mid depth. So we need to find the axial strain somewhere here. So somewhere along this cross section AB. Fine, fine. That can be done very easily. You just try to formulate this problem in a better way. Try to assume that we have an element over here. Okay. So this is circumference. Around the circumference, there is this stress. The name is sigma C. Let's write here also sigma C. And over here, this is the longitudinal stress or the axial stress, 
sigma a now what we are supposed to find is axial strain in the cylinder wall at mid depth okay so axial strain we need to find we need to find e a we need to find e a and this is very simple now e a will be will is base is basically a combination of direct strain and indirect strain let me just write direct strain ds due to sigma a and plus indirect indirect strain due to sigma c this indirect strain by the way is the lateral strain is the lateral strain and guys try to remember this lateral strain is mu times of linear strain okay now this is very very simple strain is nothing but what do we have strain is written as sigma over e remember this so due to sigma a this is going to be sigma a over e and here this sort of increases the length and this lateral strain okay it is always of the opposite nature it will try to decrease okay so this is going to be minus mu times of linear strain and that is due to sigma c so that's going to be sigma c over e you just need to punch in the values and you can get the answer very very easily let me just do that for you okay sigma a that we achieved was i guess it was uh, 10 yeah sigma a and sigma c both of them let me just check sigma a and sigma c both of them worked out as 10 megapascals what can be taken as common 1 minus mu mu is how much 0 0.3 multiplied by sigma a and sigma c it's, it's same 10 megapascal so 10 into 10 raised to 6 all of that divided by e what is e it is 100 gpa so this is going to be 100 into gpa is 10 raised to 9 it's that simple so even if you try to take a look at this calculation this is 1 minus 0 0.3 this is going to be 0 0.7 multiplied by this is 6 plus 1 7 9 plus 2 is 11 7 by 11 so this is going to be minus 4 10 raised to minus 4 so basically you can write this as 7 into 10 raised to minus 5 so this is the amount of strain developed at this mid section you can see so the correct option is option c very very easy okay so four marks in the back next problem let's see this oh looks looks interesting so we've got a rod okay having length l obviously um, cross section area is uh, a subjected to a tensile force as shown in the figure if the Young's modulus of the material varies from linearly from E1 to E2, that means let's say the Young's modulus is increasing from this cross section to this cross section. If you reach here, it will be this much. Then it will be this much. It is it is increasing always. Let's say we've assumed it to be increasing from E1 to E2. Something variation of that sort is happening. Let's say. Now what we've been asked is the normal stress developed at section S S S. Again, this is the trick question. How many marks? Oh, one mark appeared in the year 2013. This is a problem which is which has been given to test your fundamentals. Okay, let me just have a discussion with you. So, what about stress? Whenever you apply load, whenever you apply load, and let's say that load is uh, below the elastic limit or the proportional limit. In that case, in that case, the material also develops it's a, it's an inherent property the material also develops an resisting force and that resisting force per unit area is what is known as stress or the stress induced isn't it so remember guys stress completely depends upon the load applied and the area okay let's say let me give you one more example let's say we've got a rod over here right and let's say this is steel and let's say we have one more rod, same, same dimension, same length, same diameters, and let's say this is aluminum. Now, let me ask you a question. If I apply a load of, let's say, 10 newtons to both of them, which rod is going to undergo a large amount of stress? What is going to be your answer? Well, the answer should be that sir in both the rods the stress is going to be same the only difference is their elongations are going to be different remember even if the material is different does not matter if if the dimensions are same and the material is different in that case sigma is same remember as it depends upon the load applied and the area of cross section and here also the load and area are same 
okay the only thing that changes is the elongation the elongation in steel and in aluminum are going to be different because that depends upon the value of young's modulus and which can be achieved from the stress strain diagram individually so remember the correct option is option a now these all are fancy options you know these all are fancy options and they've been they have been given very particularly for those guys who have absolutely no knowledge or incomplete knowledge regarding simple stress and strain okay these fancy options right okay so that was it problem number 13 and uh, let's move forward uh, this again looks an interesting problem a circular rod so there is a circular rod uh let's say of length and area of cross section a has modulus of elasticity e and coefficient of thermal expansion alpha one end of the rod is fixed and the other end is free if the temperature of the rod is increased by delta t let me just underline all the important parameters so what basically happens one end is fixed and the other end is free to expand let's say what will happen so it's, it's it's something like this so there is a circular rod over here i'm drawing the front view and what what's given is this length has been given to us okay now this is given a temperature rise how much delta t degree celsius let's say uh, the cross section is a so that's the cross section okay a revolved section you can say cross section is a fine fine the young's modulus is e so apart from this e also has been given this length is a so obviously whenever there if there is a rise in temperature if there is an increase in temperature there is going to be an extension okay so this is the change in length or rather you can say this is delta l and this represents the increase in length now if i were to calculate this increase in length it can be done very easily this is alpha into multiplied by the increase in temperature multiplied by the initial length this is the increase in length right now let me just read out the options so this is the entire arrangement of our problem first option says that stress developed in the rod is e alpha delta t first of all if you have watched my videos on thermal stress and strain you should have realized this if the material is constrained then only stresses will be set up if the material is not constrained or let's say if the material is free to expand then no thermal stress will set up let me reiterate let me clarify if if let's say this is a steel rod if i fix this end over here and if i increase the temperature then obviously this can expand freely no problem there is no constraint as long as the material is able to expand freely there will not be any stresses induced thermal stresses are only induced when when you don't allow the material to expand and here you can clearly see they are allowing the material to expand that is why no stress will set up no stress or no thermal stress you can say t h okay but obviously since it is free to expand there is going to be an increase in length and that increase in length with respect to the original length is what is referred to as the thermal strain okay and uh, rather not thermal strain but simple strain in general and if i were to calculate the strain this can be done very easily this is uh, how much alpha delta t into l divided by the original length l and l will cancel out so the increase change in length with respect to original length that is strain is going to be equal to alpha delta t so this option stress developed in the rod is zero and strain developed in the rod is alpha delta t this one is the correct option and all the other options are absolutely trash rubbish okay very easy i guess um okay this problem 15 problem this <laughs> this this is this is sort of um, what what would what, what, what would i call it uh, this is a memorization problem everyone everyone who has taken up this course of mechanics of solids should remember this okay this over here is the proportional limit p is nothing but the proportional limit followed by as you go along this is the elastic limit this is the upper yield point this is lower yield point this is this is maximum stress or ultimate stress you can say and this is the breaking point so let me just mark them i remember all of these things right I, and have actually if you have seen my first video i'll link up all the videos in the description you can go ahead and watch them even if you have not seen all those videos or my videos still you should know this 
this is the stress strain diagram which you are going to study first of all in mechanics of solids and also we you do an in depth study in material science so p corresponds to what proportionality limit 3 let me just write 3 over here q okay q q is uh, what is q q is elastic limit that is 4 r r is upper yield point done that is 1 then s s is lower yield point that is 5 3 4 1 5 t t is ultimate tensile strength that is 2 and u obviously this is where the material ruptures or fractures um, this is going to be 6 so the correct option is well it's between b and c so 3 4 1 5 2 6 3 4 1 5 2 6 option c is correct so 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 damn easy another one which one of the following types of stress strain relationships best describes the behavior of brittle materials such as ther ceramics and thermosetting plastics okay brittle materials right let me just make it stress and strain stress and strain yeah if you try to do a tensile test on a brittle material if you keep on increasing the load if you keep on increasing the load there is very little deformation before which it breaks so this is the plot okay it's a linear plot it's a linear plot so for a brittle material you 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 the moment you start the experiment the moment you start stretching it doing a tensile st stress it undergoes very little or, or absolutely no deformation before it breaks so this is a basically a linear plot which you are going to get even on concrete also you can do that option d is correct so let us now begin with problem 17 and here we go so there is a horizontal bar with a constant cross section subjected to loading as shown in the figure young's model is for different sections that is uh, for section a b it is 3 e for section b c it is e right so there are three sections a not three but two sections a b and b c so for the deflection at c to be zero so there isn't a deflection at c but there is linear deformation linear deformation at c okay or axial deformation at c that axial deformation actually works out to be equal to zero very interesting now guys what we need to find is for this condition we need to find the ratio p is to f this is what we need to work on this is sort of a fill in the blank problem okay not an objective one so let's start from this section c already a force is acting in the name of the forces f and in order to balance this let me put forward two forces one like this also for tensile nature and one like this this all is sort of a compressive nature now these two forces this f and this f are of the same nature tensile and what they will try to do they will try to extend the length of the bar therefore a tensile stress and a tensile strain and here at b already there is a force in the form of p okay now let me shift this force f here this way this is force f okay now let's say that force f is greater than force p these two are actual forces by the way in that case this entire these two forces can be replaced by one single force and which one is bigger f so f direction has to be taken into account so it is towards the right hand side that's why i'm going to be applying a force over here f minus p and similarly this support will be replaced by this force f minus p done very easy so the nature again is positive tensile stress tensile strain now let us try to apply this condition so this length is l and uh, what about the cross section it's a e cross section is equal okay so the it's going to be a comma 3e cross section area young's model i cross section area and young's model i very simple net deflection total deflection total deflection is basically a sum of deflection along section a b and deflection along section b c so how can you apply this along a b is pl upon a e pl upon a e that is load load is f minus p multiplied by length over a and young's modulus is obviously into this is going to be three times of e so let me just put this into a bracket plus again here are the forces along this cross section it's f multiplied by l again divided by area it's same multiplied by e and all of this is going to be equal to zero 
let me just check the equation yes everything appears fine so the stuff which is going to cancel out is this area this e is also going to cancel out l is also going to cancel out so what we have is f minus p over 3 plus f so if you just can take the lcm this is what will remain this is going to be f minus p plus 3 times of f is equal to 0 now the equation becomes very easy this is going to be 4f minus p is equal to 0 and uh, you wanted this relationship this ratio this is not ration this is just ratio p over f so so 4f is equal to p and uh, p over f well p over f will be equal to what will be equal to 4 yes that's right that's right so the ratio p over f is nothing but 4 simply right so this was by the way a two mark problem next problem okay looks interesting and looks to me as if you've got a thermal stress problem yes 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 you can see this degree okay so there is a metallic rod 250 millimeters and this is uh, placed between two rigid immovable walls okay they will not move the rod is in perfect contact with the wall on the left side okay it's fixed you can see and there is a gap of 0.2 mm so this is an allowance let me just write this very important data there is an allowance or there is a limited freedom for this material or rod to expand by 0.2 millimeters 0.2 millimeters okay <coughs> If the temperature of the rod is increased by 200 degrees Celsius, let's say there is a temperature rise. Delta T has been given as, let's say, 200 degrees Celsius. The axial stress, okay, we need to find the axial stress. This is what needs to be worked out. Apart from that, uh, this value of E has been given to us as 200 GPA. And anything else? Yeah, coefficient of thermal expansion alpha is also equal to 10 raised to minus 5 per degree celsius very interesting very interesting okay now if you have seen my videos on thermal stresses this is something that i had already taken up in the form of a descriptive type or conventional type problem so here is the deal strain or to be very specific let me just write this as thermal strain thermal strain is written as expansion prevented expansion prevented with respect to the original length original length let us start with the basics okay i can i can just simply apply a formula also but let me give you the concept now here is the deal just just think about this let's say this was the leftmost support and then there is this rod so instead of this allowance if i if i fix this right hand side wall directly towards this free end what will happen how much expansion would it have prevented in that case the expansion prevented this numerator would have been alpha delta t into l but right now there is an allowance allowance of how much that is 0 0.2 millimeters in that case this is going to be alpha delta t into l minus 0 0.2 that is let's say this is delta original length <coughs> well that has already been given i'll write it up that is 250 millimeters okay so this basically is the thermal strain now guys remember this sigma or let's say e is basically a ratio of stress to strain so, so thermal and thermal what are we what do we want we want thermal stress so thermal stress th is equal to e that is thermal strain multiplied by the young's modulus you just need to put this value this is e thermal okay so let's try to punch in all the values and let's see where do we achieve or where do we reach very interesting so alpha the value of alpha has been given as 10 raised to minus 5 alpha 10 raised to minus 5 into delta t the increase in temperature 200 done multiplied by l length so let's try to do this in meters 250 millimeters okay so this is going to be 250 into 10 raised to minus you know rather 250 millimeters that is going to be 0 0.25 meters done okay anything else <coughs> so minus of delta delta is how much 0 0.2 millimeters 
so instead of let me just grab all of this okay 0 0.2 millimeters so that's going to be 0 0.2 into 10 raised to minus 3 yeah and uh, anything else divided by the original length we already know well it's 250 millimeters that is 0 0.25 so it's it's that simple and there you go all of this is in newton and meters multiplied by the young's modulus that is 200 gpa so that's going to be 200 into 10 raised to 9 and that's it you just need to solve this equation it's going, it's going to be very very easy 10 raised to what 5 or minus 5 minus 5 okay 10 raised to minus 5 multiplied by 200 multiplied by 0 0.25 and that's uh, this much minus bracket 0 0.2 into 10 raised to 10 raised to minus 3 and let me close the bracket this much divided by 0 0.25 okay multiplied by 200 <coughs> into 10 raised to 9 and this is what we get how many decimal places my goodness one two three four five six six decimal places there it is so that is precisely working out as 240 six decimal places 10 raised to 6 mega pascal so that's the answer so this over here should be 240 mpa done okay it was so easy let's let's move over to move over to the next problem <coughs> okay so a hypothetical engineering stress strain curve shown in the figure has three straight lines okay with coordinates also has been given okay so this x coordinate is for stress and this y coordinate no x coordinate is for strain and y coordinate is for stress okay let's start what are we supposed to find toughness toughness right so just try to remember one thing let me just tell you i think i have just touched touched upon this concept in stress strain diagrams also it's it's something like this you go like this and then this way and then this way and here the material actually fractures okay not here but somewhere here so this this area under the curve represents the toughness this area under the curve this entire area actually represents the toughness and let me just read out something for you toughness by the way is the ability to absorb energy and mathematically it is the energy per unit volume right this is the energy per unit volume mathematically toughness is represented like this okay energy form so that's it you need to find the area of shaded region and there you go you need to apply a bit of geometry so let me just divide this into three sections let's say over here and then through r and through s so 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 let's say this is l this is m and this is n so in order to find the toughness you need to find these three areas and sum all of them up together so it's it's that easy <clears throat> so it's going to be this area this area is going to be how much um half of base base is how much base is well this is half of base base is 0 0.2 multiplied by height height is 100 done first area done plus are we moving in the right direction let me just check mm, where are we going where are we going <coughs> okay so 100 this is in mega pascals right so okay the answer is in mega joules so you just put the value in mega pascals and apart from that this is engineering strain this has been given in percentages so this has to be divided by 100 okay has to be divided by 100 done <coughs> then you can clearly see that these are the two parallel sides these are the two parallel sides and this sort of forms a trapezium and in case of a trapezium always remember this formula the area is going to be half of uh, sum of parallel sides half of sum of parallel sides multiplied by the distance between them so this is also going to be very easy so let me just do this half of sum of parallel sides sum of parallel sides so this side is how how much long this is y axis 100 this is 140 so that is uh, 240 you can just simply write 240 okay 
multiplied by <coughs> okay this much how much strain is this 0.6 minus 0.2 that is 0.4 so 0.4 it is percentage is therefore it has to be divided by 100 done uh, let's worry about another one <coughs> where is it okay okay so this is again same same stuff it's it's a trapezium so half of uh, sum of parallel sides this is 140 this is 130 so this has got to be 270 yes 270 multiplied by the strain okay this much is the strain that is how, how much 0 0.8 minus 0 0.6 that is 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 divided by 100 so let us now try to punch in all the values so here we go this is this is very simple first of all let me just try to solve this bracket over here so 0.2 into 100 100 and 100 will cancel out 0 0.2 divided by 2 okay 0 0.2 divided by 2 is going to be how much uh, this is going to be 0 0.2 into 0 0.1 0 0.1 plus uh, let's 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 have a bracket okay and this is going to be 240 240 into 0 0.4 and uh, divided by uh, 200 2 into 100 is 200 again a positive sign and plus let, let me have a fraction set again this is going to be 270 multiplied by 0 0.2 and divided by 200 yeah very simple there you go 17 by 20 really 17 by 20 let me check uh, where is the answer 17 by 20 this is 0 0.85 let me see yes 0 0.85 it's that simple okay so the final value that which you are going to achieve is 0 0.85 done next problem uh, this looks very interesting so there is a square plate of dimensions l by l okay um, which is subjected to a uniform pressure load p is equal to uh, 250 mpa external right so pressure is an external phenomena rather stress is an internal phenomena now this is sort of compressive in nature okay assume plane stress condition young's modulus has been given as 200 gpa the deformed shape again is a square now this square is having a dimension of this is l minus 2 delta l at delta their values have been given to us what we need to find is the poisons ratio very interesting let's say that we've got an axis let's say this is the x-axis let's call this as our y-axis let's try to do the strain analysis let's try to do the strain analysis along x direction now uh, now just try to listen listen to this very carefully if this was a tensile case in th in that case let's say if we had an element like this okay sigma x and let's say this was sigma y okay this is also sigma x and this is sigma y uh, along the x direction the strain would have been computed in this manner sigma x over e minus mu times of sigma y over e so this would have been the because of the direct strain okay and this is the lateral strain linear strain and this is lateral strain but here but here the dim the the condition has changed from both the directions we are having compressive strains in that case this is going to become negative and this is going to become positive and this sigma x and sigma y both of them are same and what are they they are equal to pressure p so in that case this is will this will be negative that is minus p over e and this will be positive plus mu times of p over e it's that simple now what is strain strain is change in length over original length how much is the change in length this along x direction this much plus this much that is delta plus delta that is 2 delta okay and this is reduction in length that is you have to put a negative sign okay if you do final minus initial so final is less and initial is more in that case you will get a negative sign so minus of 2 delta and whole divided by the original length how much was that that was l so yes on solving this equation you should get the value of what what are we supposed to calculate poison's ratio yes that that is achievable so let, let me do it over here okay so low so what can be done minus two times of delta delta is how much let me see 0 0.001 0 0.01 okay whole divided by the original length l l by the way is 2 and that's equal to what you can do is you can take p upon e as common okay and inside the bracket what will remain is mu 
minus 1 and p what is p p is 250 mega pascals so just put the value 250 into 10 raised to 6 and over e the value of e that is 200 gpa that is 200 into 10 raised to 9 so now that the equation has been framed this can be solved very easily and let me just tell you the value of mu which will work out is going to be equal to 1 over 5 or 0 0.2 okay so that's it that's 0 0.2 it's dimensionless 2021 20, this looks interesting a horizontal bar fixed at one end x is equal to 0 has a length of 1 meter okay that bar is having a length of 1 meter let's have a bar okay this by the way this diagram has not been provided this is something which you need to draw to to analyze and work it out properly so this is having a length of 1 meters fine yes so this is having a length of 1 meters like this brilliant okay cross section area has been given as 100 mm square so let me just write it over here a is equal to 100 millimeter square anything else elastic modulus varies along its length oh my goodness so elastic moduli is actually a function of the length e x is equal to 100 e to the power minus x in gigapascals my goodness this is going to be very interesting so this is where <laughs> e is a function of of the length of the rod okay where x is the length coordinate okay right an actual tensile load of 10 kN is applied at the free end so over here what we'll try to do is we'll apply a load of 10 kN okay something like this 10 kN so instead okay let me just write 10 kN right so here x is equal to 0 and over here we have x is equal to 1 what we need to find is the actual displacement of the free end now displacement guys um, displacement or deformation is the basic formula is P L over A E but here here there is a big issue there is no fixed value of E rather E is a variable E is varying with length so so some kind of calculus has to be incorporated okay let me just show you how here it is what we'll try to do is we'll try to consider an element let's say at a distance of x from the fixed end from x is equal to 0 this is x and let's say just this element is having a width of or having a length of dx right now let's try to analyze this element and then we'll sweep this element across the entire length to do the analysis for the entire rod or the bar so let me just shift this element this load of 10 kN will be acting on the element also it's going to be same throughout the axis so let me just do that here here we go so this element has a length of dx the load applied or acting on the element is 10 kilo newton right okay now if i were to calculate the extension of element extension of element yeah extension in element this is going to be equal to pl over ae how much that is that is 10 this way l is how much dx over area of cross section well that has been given and by the way the cross section is uniform over a times of e so we don't know what the value of e over here is let's say we call it as e x x okay across this x x meters away let's say it is e x x e is a variable by the way right it varies with respect to this function now to find the extension in no, this is the extension in element to find the extension for the entire rod extension for the entire rod or entire bar what you need to do is you need to integrate so this is going to be very simple you need to integrate let's say from x is equal to 0 that is here to x is equal to 1 in that case this element will be sweeping this entire length okay so that's that's very interesting so here we go 10,000 times of dx over over um, area area is how much 100 mm square so this is got to be 
वन हंड्रेड इंटू टेन रेस टू माइनस सिक्स इंटू मीटर स्क्वेयर मल्टीप्लाइड बाई ई वेल ई इज वैल्यू हैज बिन गिवेन दिस इज हंड्रेड ई टू दी पावर माइनस सिक्स बट दिस इज इन गीगा पासकल दैट मीन्स दिस हेज टू बी मल्टीप्लाइड बाई टेन रेस टू नाइन ओके सो दैट्स इट दैट्स that this is exactly what you need to do you need to solve this integration and um, it would be better let me just simplify this so this is going to be 10 raised to minus 3 and there is an integral from 0 to 1 and this is what remains e to the power minus x so it's a d to the power x e to the power let me just check e to the power minus x now you can do this integration and on a calculator also this is going to be very easy let me rather show you how this can be done so this is going to be integration of well limits are from uh, 0 to 1 and this where are we going uh, yeah yeah here yeah. e to the power minus x so in numerator it will be e to the power x so let me just e where is e, e here is e to the power x x take it over here and that's it this is what needs to be done enter 1.718 so this is what we are getting 1.718 so 10 raised to minus 3 is that is 1 by 1000 uh, let me instead write it over here 1.718 remember yes so 1 over 1000 multiplied by 1.718 and that's it that is the extension of the bar this is in what this is in meters so this value in millimeters is going to be well this is going to be in 1.718 millimeters and that's it it's that simple actual displacement at the free end is 1.718 in millimeters done okay moving on now this is also interesting a rod of length uh, uh, let me have the red color so uh, a rod of length length how much some data is missing let me just like fix this uh, where are we going length 20 mm oh my goodness i forgot to write this length is how much 20 mm so there is a rod of length 20 mm which is stretched to make a rod of 40 mm and then it is compressed to make a rod of length 10 mm so initial initially this this was how much this was 20 and final finally after going through two phases it has become 10 mm this is in mm okay now consider the longitudinal tensile strain as positive and okay the total true longitudinal strain so there is this formula let me just tell you true strain try to remember this true strain is equal to natural log 1 plus engineering strain e n g g let me just write okay so this this is going to be very simple ln 1 plus this is going to be called what change in length final minus initial final is 10 minus initial that is 20 with respect to original original was how much uh Where is it? A rod of a rod of length. How much? Initially, it was twenty. Okay, so that's twenty. So just punch this all of this into a calculator, and you are going to get a specific value. This is going to be equal to zero point six nine three. Okay, put the all of this into a calculator. The, you are going to get this zero point six nine three. Okay, this is going to be accompanied with a negative sign. So that's option B. Done. Last problem of today's video. Let's see. what this is trying to say okay so there is a bimetallic cylindrical bar it's cylindrical like this cylindrical 1 meter square cross section area and it is made by bonding steel and aluminum young's model i has been given to maintain tensile axial strength strain okay so the strain along steel bar strain along steel bar how much 10 raised to minus 6 and this is also the same in case of aluminum the magnitude of the required force p in kilonewtons okay this has to be worked out in kilonewtons now one thing is for sure this steel is undergoing uh, tension this aluminum undergoing compression isn't it 
so steel is undergoing tension if this aluminum is being compressed so if you try to remove this there is going to be a force p a and there is going to be a force over here this is going to be p s force uh, on steel right and you can also say that p s plus p a will be equal to what will be equal to p p a will be equal to p minus p s and vice versa anyway what we are really interested in is calculating the value of p so how can that essentially be achieved so let us try to divide and rule and here we go let's start from here at this cross section that is the load applied is p a let me use a smaller subscript so in order to if i can apply two forces over here this is also p a this is also p a so this does not break the equilibrium okay or balance now these two forces this p a and this p a are of the compressive nature that is they are trying to reduce the length of the bar so let me remove this and let me write a negative sign over here so compressive stresses will be induced over here in this section now this p a will be shifted over here that is p a and we already have a force over here that is this p mm. so p is basically a summation of p a and p s so obviously p is greater and p a is smaller so what we can do is we can we can erase this p a and we can shift it like this p minus of p a okay and here we already know it is p s and p s you can guys can clearly see p is equal to p minus p a that's quite clear from this equation so here also this p s can be replaced with p minus p a simply p minus p a and this is tensile in nature so positive the length over here do we need to worry about the length well let's say this is l by 2 and this is l by 2 the cross section is a it's going to remain same here also the cross section is a and do we have the value of cross section and uh, yes i can see that a by the way is 1 meter square young's modulus also has been given and uh, for young's modulus for steel this over here is steel and this is aluminum aluminum so es has been given how much 210 gpa and e aluminum has been given as 70 gpa okay let us try to frame an equation right so if you if you see clearly that both the ends are fixed that means in totality in totality in a general sense in an overall sense the net expansion not expansion but the net deformation the net change in length is going to be equal to zero that's for sure so delta l is going to be equal to zero now this delta l is basically is a summation of delta l for steel and delta l for aluminum a this is going to be equal to zero so instead of putting a positive sign over here what we need to do is since this is positive so positive this is negative so you need to put a negative sign over here right now you need to frame an equation okay so how can you frame an equation for steel you will have this force p l over a na? p minus p a multiplied by the length that is l over 2 divided by area of cross section multiplied by e for steel minus here the forces are p a so so this is also fairly easy this is p a times of l by 2 over a and e for what e for aluminum and this is well equal to zero <coughs> so l by 2 and l by 2 will cancel out a and a will also be cancel out so the stuff remaining is let me just put the value and let's see what happens so p minus p a p minus p a over e s e s is how much 210 into 10 raised to 9 minus p a over e aluminum aluminum is uh, 70 into 10 raised to 9 is equal to 0 so you just need to solve this fairly easy and uh, 
10 raised to 9 and 10 raised to 9 will also cancel. Okay, can be taken as common. This is 73. Fairly simple. You just need to take the LCM. I am doing it over here. So the LCM is going to be 3. This is going to be P minus P A. P minus P A minus of 3 times of P A. And that's equal to 0. Fairly simple. 3 becomes 0. And 4 P A is equal to P. And uh, yeah. P A will work out as P by 4. Done. Now you have got the value of P A. Okay, you don't have to do anything else. You you don't you can put the value of P A over here, and obviously P S will be achieved as three P by four. I guess P minus P A P by four is three P by four. Okay, so this is not needed. What's needed is where where are we going? The magnitude of the required force P in kilonewtons that is required. Okay, now the strain. Let us let us make use of the strain. Let me just do it over here. Strain aluminum is equal to how much? That has been given as 10 raised to minus 6. So strain is change in length over original length. Now strain can also be written as PL over AE. Isn't it? PL over AE. Let me just check. Okay. So strain can be written as sigma over E. Right, this is for aluminum and this is also for aluminum that's equal to 10 raised to minus 6. Sigma over E, sigma. Okay, so instead of writing this sigma, what we can do is you can write PA for aluminum, PA over cross section area and into E aluminum is equal to 10 raised to minus 6. Now, this PA can be replaced by P by 4. So, what you can do is you can just write it over here P by 4 dot 1 by a e a is equal to 10 raised to minus 6. You just have to solve this equation and on doing that you are going to get the final value. Let me just put in the put in the values and this is going to be fairly simple for us. And this is going to be p by 4 p whole divided by 4 into area 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 is how much 1 meter square 1 multiplied by e a aluminum it is 70 right so 70 into 10 raised to 9 is equal to 10 raised to minus 6 and that's it this is fairly simple 74 is 28 28 into 10 28 into 10 raised to 3 so p will work out as 28 into 10 raised to 3 newtons or you can also say this is going to be um, not 28 this is going to be 7 to 280 by the way this is going to be 280 kilo newtons and there you go done two marks in your pocket so guys that was all for today i'll i've basically planned the next video on uh, compound stress and strain something which you guys call a simple or principal stress and strain so i'll be making a video on that that is going to be very interesting and um, I'll be doing that into two phases. One is going to be very analytical and the second video that is very interesting. That is going to be a completely graphical approach. That is what we call Mohr circle approach, right? We'll try to, we'll try to work out how much the principal stresses induced are and all of that kind of stuff. So that was all for today. I'll see you again in the next video. Until then, take care. Have a nice day. Keep learning. Keep watching. Thanks.